Hey guys, this is Spencer from Mobox Graphics, and in this tutorial, we're gonna create this 3D flower effect in Adobe Illustrator. This is a very CPU intensive process. So in order to not bog your computer down, I highly, highly recommend you do a couple things before you begin the tutorial. First being up in the view tab, make sure you're on CPU preview. If it says GPU preview here, then you're on the correct version. Um, if it says CPU preview here, make sure you click on it. The other thing is up in the Illustrator uh, CC dropdown under preferences in general, make sure you uncheck anti-aliased artwork. That's going to help us render the artwork live quicker, even though there will be some more jagged edges. That's okay, it won't actually affect your final artwork. So I'm gonna begin by deleting out all of the assets that I previously had here. If you wanna start fresh, you can go to File, New, Make sure you set up a 1920 by 1080 artboard and then in RGB color mode and hit create. So that's what we've got set up here. And I'm gonna begin by creating a background, clicking and holding on my shape tool and selecting rectangle tool. I'm gonna to click in the upper left hand corner, 1920 by 1080, perfect. I'm gonna make sure I'm using one of my swatches here. I have three of them created, a green, a blue, and a black. The black's about a 90% black. So I'm gonna use that as the background, make sure it's centered up with my alignment tools, aligned to artboard, horizontal, and vertical center. And then I'm gonna lock that in with Command-2. So now we've got that locked in, we can't accidentally move it. We're gonna create the 3D effect with three steps. The first step is a blend, the second step is a zigzag effect, and the third step is using the pucker and bloat effect. Each of these steps has so many things you can tweak to, that will affect the end result. So I'm gonna to try to create something similar to what you guys saw on the thumbnail and what we had in the beginning here. But as you go along, anything you tweak will change that end result very easily. And also as we go along, I'm gonna show you how I create it in the most efficient way so that it doesn't bog down the system as we get going. Anyway, I've talked long enough, let's get into it. I'm gonna create a star here with the star tool. So click and hold on that rectangle shape, a rectangle tool, and then drop down to the star tool, let go, and now you have the star tool. I'm just gonna click anywhere on my canvas here. It's gonna bring up the star dialog box. We've got two radiuses. I'm gonna set 150, and then we're gonna do eight points on that star. I'm gonna hit okay. So from there, I've got this star that's currently filled in with black. So let's change that to a stroke, we'll do this green stroke color and we'll do three points on it. And then instead of a black fill, we'll just have nothing in the center of it. Okay, from there, I wanna change the points of the star. I'm gonna do that by using the direct selection tools while I have the shape selected. And then the live corners dialog pops up. I'm gonna change this to 15. And it'll get as close to that as possible, 14.57, that's okay. So now I'm gonna go back to the other selection tool just to make sure I have this full shape selected. And what I'm gonna do now is actually select the gradient. And we're gonna change this stroke. If I click on it, that'll bring it up in front and that's what I'm gonna affect next. We're gonna add a gradient to the stroke. So now that I have the stroke selected, just click on the gradient thumbnail here and that'll set a gradient to it. First, we're gonna change the type to radial. You can leave the rest of these options as default. And then I'm gonna set this first color to be black and the second color to be my green. And next, I'm gonna bring this black all the way over, almost three quarters of the way over. Then I'm gonna change the location of the gradient. You'll see how that affects it. And we're just gonna bring it almost like three quarters of the way towards green from the black. And that's how I'm gonna have this, this first uh, shape sort of gradiated, I suppose. Is, is gradiated a word? Uh, that's how I'm gonna have the gradient work on this first shape. So next, I actually wanna duplicate this shape. So I'm gonna go up to Edit, Copy, which is also Command-C, and then Edit, Paste in Place, which would be Shift-Command-V. Now I have another object on top here. You can see I can move it around. I'm actually gonna grab the corner of it and use Shift and Option to scale it up from the center. And then we're gonna do that exact same thing. Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in Place and we're gonna scale that next shape up even more. From there, I'm actually gonna take this center shape down a little bit. Remember, I'm holding Shift and Option to keep it proportionate and from the center out. We're gonna change the gradient on this second shape and the third shape. On the second shape, let's go back to our gradient and we're gonna change that to green on one side. So we'll just click on this green, drag them over here. And we're gonna change it to black on this side, perfect. And we're gonna go about oh, a quarter of the way towards green. But then the location of this, we're gonna take it back to that sort of three-quarter position. Then we have the third shape here. We're gonna take that gradient 
and it's going to be green to not black, but the blue color. And then we'll just move this gradient a little bit towards the blue, maybe three quarters of the way towards the blue. So there we have each of our gradients set up. The middle shape is the hardest to see, but that's okay. What we're going to do next is just select them all. So I've got all three shapes selected. And we're going to create a blend out of this by going to Object, Blend, Blend Options. And our blend options here, we're actually going to do specified steps. And I'm going to select 25 steps to start with. This is one of those things that is going to help your computer render everything quick. At the end, we can come back and maybe change this to 300 or 500 to make a smoother transition. You'll see what I'm talking about as we go along. Specified steps, and we're just going to do align to page and hit OK. Now, it didn't create the blend yet. We're actually going to need to go back to object, blend, and we're going to need to make it. After we do that, you'll see we have, actually, if I zoom in here, we have 25 steps in between each of these. It's a little hard to see because we did a three point stroke on each of these shapes, but you'll see there's 25 blends in between here. So that's the first step. We've got our blend set. Now just click on this shape. It grouped it all together. So now they're all gonna move together. We're gonna add the zigzag effect next. So I'm gonna click on the shape, go up to effect, down to distort and transform zigzag. From here, I'm gonna set this to be 35 pixels at absolute. Relative would be a percentage. Absolute is an actual pixel amount. And then as far as ridges, I'm just gonna change that to five. And then I'm gonna make sure it's smooth on the points. And you can preview this to see what's gonna happen. We're already getting some really weird effects. Almost looks like a snowflake. I'm gonna hit okay. Now we have our zigzag step done. I'm gonna click this shape again, go to effect, go back down to distort and transform and do pucker and bloat. And for this one, I'm gonna do it around 90% and we'll see what happens when we hit preview. Now, if your shape looks a little out of sorts like this one, it may be because in the appearance panel, the zigzag effect is on top of the pucker and bloat. All we have to do is drag that pucker and bloat above the zigzag and we have our flower effect. Now it looks a little bit different than the one that we had in the beginning because of a, a few certain things. For instance, we're only doing 25 steps on the blend and also each of the strokes is at three points, a little bit thicker of a stroke than my final image. So in order to render the final image, I would click on this, double click on it, so that now we're working inside of it. We have the blend isolated. You can click on each of the paths and change those to one point each on the stroke. So we can grab each of those paths, take them from three points, take them down to one point. It's gonna give us a much more detailed effect. So now if I double click out in this gray area, it takes me back out of isolation mode. Now I can select this blend again, go up to object, blend, and then blend options. And what we can do now, see so we only have 25 steps, so you can actually see each of the shapes that make up the effect. We can change this to something a lot bigger, like 300, and hit OK. And that's going to give us that smooth looking 3D effect. So there you go. That's the 3D flower effect that we had in the very beginning of the video. However, it's so easy to change this. If I click on this blend, go to appearance, and even just go to zigzag, if I select uh, ridges per segment and click on preview, all I have to do is hit the up arrow key, and I get a completely different shape almost every single time. Hit the up arrow key a couple times, and you'll get an almost completely different flower effect. Same goes for almost every single characteristic in every step that we went through. If you create different shapes with the blend, like these don't have to be the same exact shapes, that'll create a different effect. If you adjust any of these pixel amounts, that'll create a different effect. On the pucker and bloat, if you adjust this percentage, that's going to create a different effect. And you'll see that there are just endless ways in which you can customize this I've seen some really awesome shapes out there created using a similar process and would love to see it if you guys posted some and tagged Mobox Graphics. We'd love to see your designs. Anyway, I hope this tutorial helped you. If you have any questions or suggestions, post them in the comments below and we'll be sure to follow up. You can also find me on YouTube and social media at Pixel and Bracket. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.